Wait, let me let me check if my camera is still running. It is. I've been filming for half an hour already. Jesus Christ, I'm not even halfway. That said, perhaps the closest example comes from ancient China and their weapon of the twin hook swords. Remember friends, there is no war in Ba Sing Se. But the curved ends of these swords would be used to trap a weapon or hook the back of a shield to pull it down, exposing your opponent for a solid attack from the second sword. And from there, everything about the dual okay, hook wait, swords was deadly. The knuckle guards were sharpened for slashing and punching, the tail was a sharpened short dagger, certainly in advance, but very, very cool and very, very deadly set of weapons. From a functional standpoint, Eivor's axes would be a much simpler version of this. The main advantage of the axe is the hook under the blade, so one axe could catch the opponent's weapon or shield, pull it away, leaving the body exposed for the blow of the second axe, just like with the hook swords. That's the good news. Alright, once again, something that shows that MatBat has no fighting experience. Um, it's, it's not super wrong, but the idea of opening your opponent's shield or weapon for the second axe. Like, you can do that with one axe, all right? I, I don't have an axe, but let me, this will, this will show what I mean. It's a mace, but imagine that this is an axe head, right? If you open up your opponent's shield with your axe, like pull it open, when you can just come around and strike with that same side, all right? You could do it with two, but when you're talking about the efficiency of an axe, like an axe is, some axes have pointy bits so you could stab with it as well, but an axe is primarily a chopping weapon, right? Uh, if you have to move this open and then whack with that arm, you're gonna open yourself up. You, these are two open movements that you really don't want. You're opening yourself up like this, and I'm opening myself up like that. It would be better to keep this arm closed, open up with this arm and come back around. Understand? Sword fighting on a chair. Also, I wouldn't necessarily say that that like the beard of an axe is is its primary function or strongest function or whatever he said. Like I, I think that the primary function of an axe is splitting somebody's head into or like chopping off an arm, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's definitely useful hooking with an axe, but again, when you're talking about hooking weapons, the only real success that you're gonna have is hooking other, um, other axes in my experience. With the Viking reenactment, you might be able to hook around like um, a spear if it has like like little wings sort of that you can hook behind. Sword, it's not gonna work. Um, you can hook behind somebody else's axe, the beard of somebody else's axe, and quickly yoink it out of their arms. Um, you can hook behind shields, that is true, but other than that, uh, no, but you can hook people's arms and, and legs as well. Um, do that if, well, a lot of reenactment doesn't allow it because it's dangerous, but you know what I mean. So the bad news is that axes are just glorified sticks with a heavier head. Why is an axe just a glorified stick with a, a stick with a heavier head? That is, <sighs> whatever. This video is getting too long, so I'm just gonna skip over it. Meaning their defensive abilities and overall reach are incredibly limited. Overall reach is limited. Depends. Depends on the axe, right? You can have an axe with a smaller head that is longer, or you can have an axe with a larger head that is shorter. Now, these axes that uh, this guy is using in the video game are horribly, horribly inaccurate, way too big, way too wide, stuff like that. But like a Dane axe is enormous, and they're not heavy at all, because if you look at the profile, they are... Wait, that's not the profile. This is the... If you look at the front, at the sharp bit, basically, they are very narrow, they're very thin. They have to be, in order to be nimble enough that you can use them effectively. So, could you dual wield axes? Sure, you could. Would you want to? Honestly, only in very limited situations where there's almost nothing else to use. And in the Valhalla trailer, Eivor is surrounded by abandoned boss grip shields, where the grip is inside a protected knob in the middle of the shield. What he should be doing in this situation, instead of looking around with a lot of mood, is picking up the obvious complement to his offensive main weapon. That is, without question, the single best strategic move that he should be True. making in this moment which then of course brings up our second question the shield question uh, very true um if you didn't have a shield if there are shields lying around and you use an axe um you should definitely pick up a shield while he's picking up one why doesn't he pick up two 
Is there ever any reason to dual wield a shield? In my research, I couldn't find any historical examples of anyone ever dual wielding shields, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it never happened. Shields are super useful and are incredibly versatile defensive tools, but is there- Oh my god, wait, hang on. Did you see that flail? Look at how disgusting that flail is. <laughs> that looks horrible. Ugh. <laughs> Ew. Incredibly versatile defensive tools, but is there any Saurons in the house? Have more than one? Probably not, unless you're in the rare circumstance of being. Oh my God! Two disgusting flails. Look at those things. Ugh. <laughs> But that's just horrible. That's, Why do people like flails so much? They're stupid. They're bulky. They don't. They don't even look good. Guys, please stop. Stop with the flails. Unless you're in the rare circumstance of being attacked on both sides and are in desperate need of a hasty retreat. Sure, a shield can be used as a weapon like we see in the game, Spin but attack. it's not a good weapon. The benefit of axes and swords and lances and whatever aren't just the sharp stabby bits, though those are certainly perks, it's the fact that they're extending the effective lever of your arm, keeping you out of harm's way while substantially increasing the amount of damage that you can do. A shield quite simply isn't doing that. In a way that is true uh, like i said before a shield bash is not nearly as effective as uh, tv makes you want to believe thing is though you can hit with the edge of a shield and that would you know hurt people depending on what shield is depending on how heavy the shield is most real shields are not nearly as heavy as people think they don't they're not that thick they don't have thick iron rims um and likewise when you talk about dual wielding shields Wrestling is way more effective. You, you just gotta wrestle. You, it's useful to have one shield because you can protect yourself against incoming blows and then use that to get close and start grappling. Essentially, that's the best chance you have. You might use a shield to, to like bash somebody's skull in. You might be able to do that. You're gonna have just as much luck grabbing a rock or just grabbing his head and bashing it onto the floor, essentially. Um, smacking people with two shields. Nah, it's really not that effective. What's worse is that, as you just saw, the most effective way to use a shield as a weapon is by using no, its well, edge. I just said Think that. Think about <laughs> why an arrow or a bullet works. They put all of the pressure on as small of a point as they can, Man. creating a single point of maximum impact. A shield does basically the exact opposite, spreading the force behind it as much as possible. This is great when you're defending and you want to dissipate the energy from an incoming attack, but when you're attacking, it just means that you're going to be making less of an impact over a larger surface area. If you have a single big shield, then yeah, maybe you can use both your hands to drive the furthest point of the shield into your opponent and do some damage that way, but with dual wielding... Why would you need to use both hands? You can just, I mean, you can sort of run and storm somebody with one shield and like see what happens. I mean, it's not all that effective, especially if your opponent has a weapon, then you're probably gonna get stabbed in the neck while you're trying, but you know, you can try. <laughs> Again, that, that's not the effective way. You're not considering wrestling. If you have no weapon and you only have a shield, what you need to do is protect yourself from an incoming blow and then grapple as fast as you can, take your opponent to the ground and try to control their weapon arm if they have one or if possible try and take their dagger if you don't have one, take theirs, stab them with it, something like that. Both of your hands are on different shields and your offensive ability effectively drops to zero. It is literally the opposite. How does your offensive ability drop to zero? You can throw sand in their eyes. You always have offensive ability. It's not a video game. It's not a video game where you need to hold an item that gives you attack points in order to be able to attack, alright? You can punch somebody with a shield. I'm not gonna say it's incredibly effective because it's not, but you could. It's gonna do something. You can fucking headbutt them. You don't need a weapon for that. ...of what you want. But what if you had a hybrid weapon? What if you didn't just have a sword, but you had a sword and shield combo? They may just seem like a creation of fantasy games, but there is some historical documentation about shields He's talk with about spikes the lantern shield, isn't he? appearing during the Dark and Middle Ages. Most notably used by the armies of William the Conqueror, these spiked shields tended to be round, thin, targe-style shields with the... William the Conqueror? Hang on. Wait a minute. Still rolling? Yeah, okay, because, wait a minute, hang on. I want it to be on record to see if I'm just incredibly stupid and confused. Willem the Conqueror? You mean, you mean Willem the Second? Of, of Normandy, right? 
right? We're talking about the same one, right? 11th century, like from the Bayeux Tapestry. That Willem the Conqueror. Let me, hang on. Willem the Conqueror. Willem the Conqueror. 1828, or to 18, no, um, 1028 to 1087, yeah. It's Willem the Conqueror, King of England, depicted in the Bayou Tapestry. Willem the Conqueror used spike shields? When? <laughs> Just no, huh? Wait. What? <laughs> what? When? Where did you get this info? From Tumblr? <laughs> Willem the Conqueror did you spy shields? When? How? When did he? There's no evidence of this sticking out of them appearing during the dark and middle ages most notably used by the armies of william the conqueror these spiked shields tended to be round thin targe styled shields targes wait it's worse did you see the surprise in my face just now hang on oh, hold up What? MatPat! I was with you until now! What is this? A targe? No! A, a targe is a Scottish shield that was used from like the 16th to the 18th century. I'm I'm so fucking mind blown by this. What is going on? A targe, I'm pretty sure that the earliest targes came from like the 13th century or something. That's still way later than anything that has anything to do with Willem the Conqueror. That's the 200 years after. Mad Pat. This is just. Dumb. Oh my god. All right. Uh, he, he, okay, he technically says targe style shield. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he just thinks that a targe style shield is any kind of round shield that has a strap. Which is still fucking dumb. Say, oh my god. Is a Spartan shield a targe? Is round and has a strap. What about a rotella? That's a targe, right? What about one of them shields that the fucking the, the, those fucking gladiators use? What are they called? Hoplomachus. Are those targes? No. It's not a targe. You're, you're in the wrong century, dummy. Alright. <clears throat> Sorry, I lost my cool. I am. Calm and collected. Right. I'm Zen. Think about waves. Think about birds twittering. I fucking hate birds. Why would I think about that? Let's continue. Whatever. With the boss of the shield equipped with a massive spike coming out of the center. And considering Assassin's Creed Valhalla takes place in 9th century England, there's definitely a chance Eivor could nope. come across one of these bad boys in his journey. 9th century England finding a targe? It's not gonna happen, because they don't exist yet. Fun fact, by the way, targe shields were used by English longbowmen for target practice. And that is where the word target actually comes from. The more I've you heard know. That anyway, if you want to get even Lantern more shield. extreme with your spike shields, it. there's the absolute... I made a video about that too. Shield breaker spikes, but all sorts of Assassin's Creed-esque hidden blades popping out of every nook and cranny. This one was a bit late to be used by Eivor, coming straight out of the Italian Renaissance, but again, if you're looking for an offensive shield, this is probably going to be the best bet that you find in history, except again, there's a problem with all of these. How are you attacking? What do you mean, how are you attacking? You stick them with the pointy end. 
Quite literally. ...be equipped toe-to-teeth with spikes. But unless you're charging headfirst into the enemy, leading them straight to a wall, or slamming the spikes down onto an opponent laying in the ground, you're not getting a lot of force behind your attack. This whole idea comes from the, again, myth that you can stab through armor, which you can't. Uh, I've mentioned that plenty of times before. I'll probably mention it plenty of times in the future. Uh, you would avoid people's armor, you would stab around it, especially considering the low amounts of armor that these people have. Um, in this century there was plenty of bits that you can stab next to the armor, that's what you would go for. And I don't know if you've ever cut yourself, but you probably have, and if you have, then you probably remember that it didn't take a lot of force. Uh, if your weapon is sharp, then you can puncture somebody's body, if it's unprotected, quite easily. So. You know, if you want to stab through somebody's breastplate, good luck. It's not going to happen. Like, even if he's trapped against the wall, it's not going to happen. Like, you might be able to pierce mail. It's not that easy to pierce mail. It's technically possible, and you could do that if you jam it in there pretty hard. Um, in which case, I would say that the spear is probably going to be more effective at it than uh, the shield would be. But, you know, this whole idea, how would you attack with it? You stab people with it. What do you think? From what I've read, the spiked shield was a short-lived trend in history, mostly related to the fact that it was a waste of resources. Look at the battlefield in the Valhalla trailer. Everyone is tightly packed, practically fighting on top of each other. That's not a tightly packed battlefield at all. <laughs> uh, battles were fought in formation, like you were, were literally right next to the people that you were like crushed off and like this, you could touch them. Really, you know. Fighting during this era happened in tight masses of people, and the spikes were meant to control distance and angles from which an opponent could attack. But the spikes became a nuisance quickly in these sorts of battles, either getting in the way, getting caught on various objects, or just poking your allies in the back. Uh, I agree. Uh, spikes can be a nuisance. You generally want to limit the amount of spikage uh, that you have uh, in your kit. Um, which is probably why most of the time people didn't have spikes, but there's one prime thing that you forget that the spike was for, especially like a center spike that some targets have, uh, like similarly to how a boss shield, uh, a shield with a boss in the center, right, um, has uh, the boss, the boss has as a function that it is sort of an anchor point for your opponent's weapon to get stuck on so you can control it. Um, and a spike does that as well, just makes it a little bit easier. I agree though that generally spikes on your shield or anywhere on your equipment are not useful and uh, will mostly get in the way. So really, any way you slice it, this is just another instance of just because you can dual wield something or slap a bunch of spikes onto something, it doesn't mean that you should. Because here's the real fact of the matter, friends. Forget dual wielding. Eivor should be using ranged attacks for everything. As I now mentioned before, talk in an about early peak of the gameplay for Valhalla, um, you... I can't really say anything about that. I, I don't know if you can decapitate somebody with an arrow. I... I... <laughs> I can't make any claims on that idea. Many historians also tie the arrival of the Christian church in the area to the end of the Viking raids, as the raids didn't keep up with the teachings of the church. And remind me again, who is the main antagonist of the Assassin's Creed series? Oh yeah, the Templars, the most wealthy and powerful of the Western <laughs> Christian military. It's not a Templar, that's a hospitaler. <laughs> uh, guys, um, a quick reminder. It's, it seems it's completely unrelated to anything we've talked about before, but um, white cloak with a red cross is a Templar. White cloak with a black cross is a Teutonic Knight, and a black cloak with a white cross is a Knight Hospitaller. Okay, um, that's pretty much all I have to say, I suppose. So all in all, not as bad as uh, the previous video, the For Honor video, but uh, still, uh, mad bad. Please, when you make videos like this, get someone knowledgeable to help you out. Honestly, that's all I'm gonna say. But hey, that's just a theory. A history theory. Also follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And thank you for joining my quest. And I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye guys.